This goes back to only 50 years ago, 52 years ago, to Ted Maiman, you know, one of the great uh, scientists and engineers and technologists of our time. Uh, he uh, you know, came from Stanford, and then he went down to use aircraft, and he invented the laser. And uh, you can see how small it was, sort of the same size as the first transistor. Now, and they both changed totally since then. Then John Knuckles, a few days later, up at Lawrence Livermore National Lab, said, I got an idea of using lasers to make fusion happen. And uh, he told us to do this. And he's still around uh, uh, talking to us. And this, he said, why don't you just have a gold can? Could be other materials. And inside of it, we have a little fuel tank of hydrogen. Remember, that's about the size of a peppercorn. And it has a little capsule wall made out of plastic and put some lasers into it and heat it up like an oven, except you do it in a few billionths of a second and bring it up to millions of degrees. And then you have these x-rays that will be absorbed by that plastic and turn it into a rocket. And the rocket is now pushing in at very high speeds. We go in at about a million miles an hour, so it really moves quickly. And if you do this, you could get pressures and temperatures high enough for Einstein's equation to work. So, so he said to do that, and 52 years later, we're here and doing this experiments. You know, you have to have an infrastructure around these guys to take advantage of them. And if you don't, the, you know, a lot of these things just die on the vine. But, uh, you know, it's our goal to, uh, you know, look for people, young people, and great ideas, and, and nurture them. So I do think you need uh, these ideas. I always go back uh, to Ted Maiman, you know. He went up against Bell Labs, MIT, the whole crowd, and built a laser that they had decided would not work. And he built it with Edmund Scientific, a Bell and Howe lamp, and stuff like that. It's kind, of a, it's kind of an interesting story. And that's because he was a good physicist, a good engineer, a good inventor, and he wasn't afraid of what other people were saying. And, you know, they never really recovered from it, you know. <laughs> but, he was, you know, he, uh, he just pushed that envelope to the limit. I think that's what we all need to do.